the term culture originating from Latin cultura, growing cultivation, refers to the custom and belief of way of life and social organization of a particular country or group. Communities are generally make up of people who share cultural characteristics. These cultural characteristics are defined by various influences, including geographical, spiritual, and agricultural considerations. With different cultures, the factors will be partly or totally different. That's why these attributes directly contribute to the uniqueness of each culture. The purpose of this documentary is to introduce you to the distinctive culture of traveling, a charming little province in the Mekong Delta. Javan is a coastal province in the Mekong Delta bordering the provinces of Benjia, Vĩnh Long, Sóc Trăng, and the East Sea. It has an area of 20-20-92 square kilometers with a population of about 1.1 million people, of which the ethnic Khmer accounts for about 30%, including a provincial city and seven districts. Chavan has a complex evolutionary history with different external factors involved in the formation of the province. Chavan was heavily influenced by the French colonialism, leaving a lasting impact on its cultural element. In addition, having been part of the Khmer Empire for a long time, Chavan's tradition and society are often characterized by the Khmer culture. The village is tranquil with the green rice fields, Fruit arcades and water coconut palm trees along the river combined harmoniously with Khmer culture. Dotted by the tempers, pagodas in the immense Mekong River of Vietnam. One of them is Ang Pagoda, which is a religious site situated in National Road 53, Group 4 at Wai in Chavan. It is a well-known religious complex in the Mekong Delta province of Chavan. The pagoda itself is the biggest one among 143 Khmer style pagodas in the province. According to historical documents, the pagoda was built before 1715 and was renovated in 19 1842. Covering an area of 3.5 hectares, the pagoda itself is half hidden in a century old forest surrounding the own, a famous attraction in the Mekong Delta. It is 36 meters long and 24 meters wide, and the highlight is a 30 square meter. Altar for worshipping Buddha. In August 1994, it was acknowledged and it was acknowledged as a national historical cultural relic by the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. Okay. Yeah. Visitor coming here will admire the building in the temple with tower shaped architecture reaching straight up to the sky, bringing a magnificent but equally dignified beauty. The charming and majestic tower architecture of Al Pagoda makes it particularly attractive to visitors. The architecture and pattern, statues and sculpture in the temple, which are closely associated with Buddhism, bear the aristic imprint of the Khmer people and the unique feature of Angkor culture. Just like other pagoda in Vietnam, the predominant color of Ang Pagoda is yellow, which is believed to depict until like love and purity. At the pagoda, the harmonious combination of scenery and artwork associated with Angkor culture is expressed in pattern of dragon and phoenix and butter statues. Many religious ceremony and ritual take place at Ang Pagoda on an annual basis that show the unique culture of the Khmer ethnic group in the Mekong Delta. 
Besides, the pagoda has open courses for young Khmer people to learn the Buddhist teachings as a way to preserve Vietnamese culture in general and Khmer culture in particular. At present, there are two Khmer cultural museums in Vietnam. One is in Sok Tran province and the other is in Traven province. Traven Khmer Cultural Museum was opened in 1995. It stores many various objects of material and mental life of Khmer people in Mekong River Delta. The museum was built with green trees in large chambers that form within the scope of Ban Pon culture, tourism zone at War 8 Traven City. The museum stores many objects of material and mental life of Khmer people, especially the ancient letter about Buddhist scripture, moral teaching, and traditional story written on the boom leaf. God birth statue, which is embodiment of Godness in religious religion of Khmer people. That pronoun birth human statue with delicate formalized art used to decorate pagodas, traditional agricultural tunes of Khmer people, and so on. Ở dân tộc Khmer thì có cái lễ Tết trong năm thơ mây Thì thầy thường thì ở nhà thầy có tổ chức cũng như là cúng bái cái kiểu hay là mình sinh hoạt ở nhà trong cái mấy cái ngày Tết đó, nó có khác với ngày thường hay không rồi với thầy thấy thì nó có ý nghĩa như thế nào không thầy cái lễ Tết đó <cười> thì uh, Tết uh, may là năm mới được đồng bào dân tộc thì uh, ngày uh, uh, bà ngày 30 thì uh, dân người ta chuẩn bị uh, lễ Tết thì tới uh, 12 giờ thì cũng đón giao thừa giống như người kinh vậy đó. Dạ. Còn một một thì bắt đầu đi chùa. đi chùa. Thì mấy ngày là chuẩn bị vô tết thì dân ta sẽ trang hoàng nhà cửa để chuẩn bị lễ đi là, là dân lễ vô chùa cho mấy sư. Dạ. Nó khác với giờ thường nhiều lắm. Dạ. Thì như mình có tổ chức uh, như là cúng ông bà tổ tiên mình ở nhà như uh, người kinh mình không thầy? Có chưa? À, cúng lễ cúng mâm trái cây này kia đúng rồi cũng cũng có lễ vật gì cúng cái đó ví dụ như bao mặn hoa quả trưng yeah. bông cho bàn thờ ông bà vậy đó dạ yeah. à. nhưng mà thầy có biết cái nén sinh hoạt nào của người khmer người ta hồi đó hay làm này người khmer khi mà ngày tết thì như thầy nói đầu một ba mươi thì người ta chuẩn bị trang hoàng nhà cửa gói bánh này đó thì để chuẩn bị cho tết mùng một đi chùa, yeah. rồi mùng ba là bắt đầu người ta sẽ bắt đầu tổ chức tắm rửa cho mấy người lớn tuổi á, mấy người già yeah. tắm để người ta tắm tại nhà hay vô tắm chùa tắm tại nhà, yeah. Yeah. để cầu chúc phúc cho mấy người sống dai sống khỏi với con cháu. Yeah. 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 Cảm ơn thầy nhiều nhé thầy. Besides religious sites, cuisine is an indispensable contributing factor that sets Tra Vinh apart from the other provinces in Vietnam. When you come to Tra Vinh, uh, there's lots of dishes that uh, we need to try, such as uh, bánh tét, bún nước lèo, and yes, bún nước lèo is one of the most tried dish in Tra Vinh. Here's, I have a bowl of bún nước lèo. And um, 
there there's more things to uh, eat with bún nước lèo like uh, the pig blood, uh, spring rolls and um, pork and, and um, some um, vegetable that uh, we can add it to uh, uh, a bowl. Okay, so let's try. The main ingredients of this food are rice noodles and a unique broth which is called nước lèo. The most important part of the dish is mâm bồ hấp fermented fish sauce which is made from various kinds of fish this kind of mum is used to cook broth and to do this the mum is cooked over a low fire until it starts to boil the cooks remove all the bones and residue from the bottom of the pot and add citronella and chili to eliminate the fishy smell and spice the broth. So this is a bowl of bún nước lèo and when I was enjoying the dish it's just like, uh, you know, it's like something hot. Um, you know, um, it tastes really well from the first bite from the uh, soft and fragile noodle as well as the tasty and sweet um, broth that I taste spoon by spoon. So this is a kind of dish, a traditional dish in Chavi that I highly recommend you to enjoy. And yeah, let's move on to the second dish. As the, the Lunar New Year draws near, residents of Draku town in Dravin province have little time to relax. Making bangtek, cylindrical sticky rice cakes, it's a top priority due to rising consumer demand. Sales of bante frequently increase by four or five times during the Lunar New Year compared to regular days. Dragon cylindrical sticky rice cakes are much more colorful than standard bante, which has a green curd. The several ethnic groups that coexist peacefully in the province, including the Gun, Hua, and Khmer, are frequently associated with the color green, purple, and red. Such vibrant pastries demand a deaf craftsmanship, a banana leaf wrap, sweetened cake consisting mostly of glutinous rice, a mung bean and pig filling is rolled into a thick cylindrical cake made by mostly of glutinous rice and sweetened. The cake is then boiled, the cake is cooked, then the banana leaf is taken off and slices are made into portions shaped like wheels. Although consumers today have more choices for dead meals, central sticky rice cakes continue to be a necessity for families in southern Vietnam to continue serving clients and uphold a Vietnamese heritage. The cake makers in Dragu are working hard to teach the next generation the craft of producing bánh tét. Dravin is a province with a cross-cultural cuisine of three ethnic groups, Gun, Khmer, Khmer and Hoa. In addition to Bung Nước Leo, Bánh Khan Bánh Kha or Mâm Bò Hóc, visitors visiting this land are also easily cultivated by Bung Su, one of the 10 specialities of Vietnam with Asian culinary value. The most special feature of this dish is the long eye-catching orange color. The stalks are molded from raw shrimps that have been peeled, deveined, and seasoned according to an ancient oral recipe. After seasoning and spreading the shrimp meat to be tough, the cook begins to put the shrimp in the warp and mold it into a steam shape into the cooking pot both helping to shape the smooth part and making the soup dulcified from the shrimp flesh. Còn như mình lấy lại của ta đó, nhiều khi tép này nó cũng mọc chừng, vì khi tới con nước thì nó có tép nhiều, còn hết con nước nó ít. Nó khen con nước á, rồi hết hết con nước á, hết tép quá người ta trộn cái 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 như là là trộn bột này kia nọ không có chất lượng. Còn như mình làm ở nhà đó, mình làm làm gì 
mình làm mình cũng phải giữ cái 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 cái, 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 cái nghề của mình là, là bởi mấy cách đến của mình là, là, là không có bỏ được chứ mà thật sự ra người ta lấy lấy bán lại là ít cho tồn lại lắm tại chừng vài năm nhất thời thôi à The attraction of this dish is the broth of dragon. The broth is simmered by pork bones for many hours to make it dosed and fatty. When seasoned with spices including cashew oil, salt, pepper, seasoning powder to name, but a few to slowly shape the shrimp mixture. The broth is not clear but has a dark brown color because It is added with a little tamarind and soy sauce to create a sweet taste and a faint scent of appealing soy sauce. Plain vermish jelly looks both beautiful and delicious, just as delicious as any local vermicelli. The taste of the broth is rich, sweet, and sour, and the smell of soy sauce spreads on the tip of the tongue. The pungent taste of shallots in the vegetable flake, the softness of shrimp paste, the chewy taste of fish cakes, the crispy taste of peanuts, the softness of vermicelli, the sour taste of the broth, all make up a delicious bowl of bumshum with memorable dragon flavor. In addition to the company, the company bowl of dimple sauce, other condiments of Bum Shu also arouse a lot of curiosity for diners. The first is a jar of mints, fraction and fresh up chili pepper that are processed and used during the day. Uh, along with that is the roasted uh, peanut, uh, powdered slightly and crunchy. Um, but the best impression is the jar of fried fish sauce with garlic and sticky rice. Uh, that dish of fish sauce is already addictive because it's not only mouth-watering but it's also smooth, supple and has um, an irresistible aroma. When added to the broth, it becomes rich, richer. When coming to Javan, you can find a restaurant or a vendor that sells only in the evening on Ding Bing Phu Street, a restaurant on Hong Bung Street, or on Phan Dinh Phong Street. Speaking of culture, it is a must to mention public places that reflect the overall vibe of the region. And coming to Tra Vinh, we suggest two such places. Travin Market is a farmer market in Travin, which is located right in the city center and also the largest market in the trading hub of the whole city. It is busy from early morning until midnight. Here you can buy everything you need, from personal items to food. It is a paradise for cheap eats, suppers, and food adventurers. Local people go there shopping to have breakfast, late night snacks. The food is tasty and very cheap. Otherwise, you will also feel excited when witnessing the exciting, bustling atmosphere taking place among friendly and lovely local people. This is the ideal place to end your traveling tour, where you can buy rustic gifts for friends and relatives. At Travel Market, countless exclusive delicacies have become the local specialities, such as coconut crumb mixed up green rice, sung thanh wai, rice cake, fish stew, bún nước lèo, stuffed pancake, tub cake, and noodle soup. Located in World 1, Javan City, here you can witness a lot of activities almost every time during the day, especially in the evening when the local people often do sports like jogging, skating, or play badminton together. There are also many food and drink stores outside the park where people gather their friends to chat. Visiting the central park of Javan City will give you a once-in-a-lifetime experience about the hustle and bustle of the city's nightlife. Javan also gains its reputation for having many long-standing traditional jobs that are passed down from generation to generation.
This traditional village was created in 1916 with different kinds of decorative flowers and plants appearing in the Nien hamlet and Longman hamlet of Lamduk commune. When Tet holiday arrives around August and September of the lunar calendar, there are more than 3,000 families of two hamlets that become busy in the crop season. Nowadays, the local authorities are in the planning process for the flowers garden to enhance the quality of the products as well as improve the living standard of indigenous people. Most Khmer gardens are present on over provinces and cities of Mekong Delta, especially Japan province. Right here, there are over 140 big and small Khmer pagodas, and in that number, there are four most famous pagodas as Han Pagoda, Ang Pagoda, Ka Pagoda, and Bam Ray Pagoda. And today, we are going to introduce you to one of them. It's the Han Pagoda. This is a builder's pagoda of the southern system, located on the National Highway 54, Japan District, 4 kilometers from Japan City. The name Hang, or cave in English, comes from the gate of the pagoda built the same as a cave. For now, I'm standing in front of the main hall of the Hang pagoda. Let's see what's interesting here. Stay tuned. The Egg Pagoda Gate of Hang Pagoda is a distinctive architectural work compared to other Khmer style pagodas in our province. The main hall, which is located right in the center of the pagoda, was built on high ground with many steps leading up, decorated with many patterns and motifs. The roof of the main hall is composed of many overlapping layers on top of which is a majestic tower. The pagoda has also gained its reputation as a strictly protected bird sanctuary, home to many different kinds of birds. From the 1990s onward, the forest of Hang Pagoda has become home to many kinds of birds. There are very strict regulation on protection of birds and trees in the forest enforced by the pagoda, which have created a peaceful, natural environment for block of birds to live. The properties of Hang Pagoda cover an area about 7 hectares. It's really a radical forest with many endemic plant species such as bamboo or red fruit trees. They are crammed into many different layers, which are very valuable in terms of the biosphere. Another attraction of this pagoda to visitors is the wood carving workshop and has been operating for nearly 30 years with many products that are famous in the Vietnamese fine art market. Given such a large number of trees and wood, wood carving workshops were founded right inside the pagoda where given sculptures create unit upward from tree roots. During nearly 30 years of operation, the art wood carving workshops have produced thousands of works of different size. On works from the workshop are imbued with the traditional arts of the Khmer ethnic. Dạ thầy ơi, cô có hỏi là có thấy ở trường mình có rất là nhiều cái tác phẩm không chị? Thì một tác phẩm thì trung bình mình sẽ làm trong bao lâu? Thì tụi tôi lớn nhỏ, nên là nhỏ dễ thì nhanh chút dạ. Lâu lớn thì lâu so now, I'm standing in front of the art gallery of Hang Pagoda and let's see what's inside here and let's follow me. As you can see, there are a variety of artwork displayed in the art gallery. 
But the most astonishing one to me is this the masterpiece of nine dragons. We spent hours in the pagoda and we felt like we are lost in the land of Buddha, you know, being immersed in the unique and spiritual and cultural space of the Khmer with the unique ancient architecture of the pagodas. Well, like other Khmer pagodas, Hang Pagoda is not only a place of worship and belief, but also a place of learning, moral education and preservation of traditional art and culture of the Khmer people. In brief, it contains a deeply religious and historical value. That's all about some cultural elements of Traven, ranging from spectacular religious sites and delicious specialities to long-lasting traditional crafts. And I have to say that our own culture is not only distinctive, but also diverse. It is a harmonious combination of various traditional cultural values of different groups of people, the Khmer, the Kin, and the Hoa. And I'm quite sure that many of you have the same thought as me. Another thing is that this culture is of Tra Vinh, which is our homeland and the place we belong to. So let's just proud of it, preserve it, and make it even richer and more diverse. Thank you for listening. sống ở đó thì phải sử dụng ngôn ngữ của nước đó ờ, nhưng mà vẫn phải giữ cái ngôn ngữ của dân tộc ví dụ như là người Việt mà qua ở Mỹ lâu họ vẫn dạy con họ bằng tiếng Việt khi về nhà hoặc là họ vẫn phải gửi con họ vào những trường học tiếng Việt để nó không bị mất gốc thì nó là bình thường người Việt ở Mỹ vẫn còn phải tức là cái tớp trẻ lên nói chuyện nha bằng tiếng Mỹ không nhưng mà họ vẫn phải đưa con họ vào những trường Việt để học để mà không không có quên gốc yeah. hoặc là buổi chiều họ trở về nhà thì họ yêu cầu với nhau là phải nói tiếng Việt chứ không cho nói tiếng nói tiếng Mỹ đó vậy thôi Giống ca tài tử của anh Nguyễn Đăng Hạo Tiết Ngọc gì anh? Lưu gì? Lưu Bình Dương Lễ của Ok, Lưu Bình Dương Lễ ạ à. Bớ Dương Lễ Dương Lễ ơi, năm xưa năm xưa ta với mi còn là huynh là đệ Một con tâm nhân bác nước tên hút tích đông sang ta lo mi nhận có ngoài mua cấp có ai nhà không ở giường không không có tiếng tôi vang gần núi nhưng không ai trả lời quay thôi mình không có luôn. À, ổn vậy? Bây giờ là tình hình là sao mà anh anh hỏi cam vậy? Mày nấu quá nhẹ Hiện tại là chúng tôi giờ chưa. giờ chưa. Mười hai giờ chưa. Cô ơi khổ quá cô ơi. giờ chưa giữa cái nóng trang trang của mùa mùa hạ tháng năm. Rồi, ok. Chờ 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 đổ mùa đông giữa mùa hạ. Chợt đổ, đổ mùa mưa giữa mùa hạ Quá trời mưa ấy, hôm nay nó quấn cánh này nhảy chậm Quá <cười> được chợt, chợt đổ Người ta biết rồi, nó người ta biết rồi Ok, trường hợp chạy xe gớt cái kiến chiếu hậu Đâu rồi, cái kiến đâu rồi Đâu rồi, cái kiến chiếu hậu đâu rồi Chạy xe mấy con Chạy sao mà 
mà gớt cái kiến luôn vậy? Thế nha mọi người. <cười> à, 